Okay, I'm gonna do a rant. Another rant on something involving Hollywood on the phenomenon from the 80s known as the two Corys. Now, growing up as a little kid, I had an older sister and we, we'd watch movies together, you know, and uh, that she, like a lot of, you know, uh, girls at the time were madly in love with the two Corys. That, that's why I saw those films. I saw License to Drive, The Lost Boys, Dream a Little Dream, you know, and, you know, like a lot of girls, my sister was devastated when Dream a Little Dream was mostly about Jason Robards, you know, and, you know, those movies were great, you know, I mean, like, they had Corey Feldman and Corey Haim both clawing their way up the ladder in Hollywood, and, well, then they were in the Lost Boys together, and Hollywood went, oh my god, these two guys are teen heartthrobs, and their names, both their first names is Corey. We need to milk this for all it's worth. We need them to, like, basically be pseudo-Siamese twins tied at the hip, you know, who will be stuck having to know each other for the rest of their lives, you know. Of course, of course then their careers, you know, went, didn't go anywhere, you know, and the two Corey phenomenon in the early 90s kind of went away, and we never knew what happened to the two Corys, you know, I mean, made a couple of movies, and so that was it for the Corey phenomenon, but, oh shit, then reality television goes, well, well, we need to, we need to find a way to make another reality television show, and why don't we make a, you know, reality uh, television version of the odd couple, you know, where, oh, I got it, the two Corys, you know, like, Corey Feldman will be like, Jack Lemon, the germaphobe neat freaking. Corey Haim will be like Walter Matthau, the slob, and the reality television show, and you know, this will be great. All, all the little girls who love these two teen heartthrobs in the 80s will watch the reality television show, and you know, they'll bring back the nostalgia of the Corey phenomenon and oh yeah, first the first season was meant to be a light you know, lighthearted romp, you know, but season two, you know, between seasons, it got into a bit of a spat and well so season two like went to some dark places. Like I love season one, you know, where there's like the 20th or 30th, I don't know, you know, uh, anniversary of the Lost Boys, and, you know, there, there's some people, if you, if you want to go on vacation, well, of course, you go to Hollywood to go to the, you know, 20th anniversary of the Lost Boys reunion, you know, and well, that's why it's hilarious, the two Corys, that, that show is great, you know, but... As season one went along, you know, Corey Feldman, who, you know, got married to a hot wife and still is able to be part of the Hollywood community, makes the mistake of letting his pseudo Siamese twin, Corey Haim, move in with him and his hot wife, and it didn't go well. Corey Haim's a slob, and, you know, Basically, the season ended with, you know, uh, you know, Corey Feldman's wife going, I want Corey Hay back in Canada. I don't want that guy living in L.A. And, like, Corey Feldman's trying to say is, well, here's my pseudo Siamese twin brother. Now that the Corey phenomenon is back, you know, well, well, you know, like, I, I gotta, like, you know, keep my... 
I gotta keep my Siamese twin, pseudo Siamese twin around, you know, and when season two, because of how season one ended, you know, oh, there, there was a bit of a spat there. <laughs> a bit of a dude bros lover quarrel, and season two went to some dark places, you know, like in season one where Corey Haim is moved to tears that he is not box office potential enough that they won't let him be in the direct -to video you know uh sequel to the lost boys but uh, of course Corey Feldman had the honor of being in lost boys too but Corey Ames in tears going oh, I made a lot of mistakes in this town but oh they, they won't let me be in lost boys too and you know, Corey Feldman, his pseudo Siamese twin brother, is like, well, man, I, I tried to tell him, let Corey Hay be in the movie, but they wouldn't listen to me, man. But, oh, season two is great, you know, like, oh, I'm sorry, this is a serious thing. Oh, uh, the two Corys reality television show. I'm sorry, I started to laugh there. You killed Corey Haim. He got clean, but goes back to Hollywood and, well, you know, finds a bad doctor who starts prescribing him stuff that you should not be taking and he falls off the wagon and, you know, so it's hilarious. You know, they have that intervention that Corey Feldman trying to save his pseudo Siamese twin brother sets up, but, okay, uh, listen, why was Holly Shore at an intervention. Yeah, even if Keith Richards got clean, he is the last guy he wanted at an intervention. Telling you you are a bad person for doing drugs. Like season two is season two is great, you know. I mean, went to some dark places, but uh, Corey Haim, you know, he gets that article in Times Magazine apologizing to Hollywood for all his wrongs and please let me be in movies again. I apologize, Hollywood. And then he got the honor of having a cameo in Lost Boys 2, you know, and you know, it was it was a great show, but you know, like in Lost Boys 2, all Corey Haim had to do was do a, you know, three-minute series says to, you know, Corey Feldman, what's up, compadre? He needed, the director needed Corey Haim to, you know, like, do 50 takes. Like, two chords was genius. Like, who wants Polly Shore at an intervention telling you you are a bad person for doing drugs? No, Polly Shore. You are a bad person for being an Encino man. And in the 90s, subjecting America and all the world to the Polly Shore phenomenon. Well, that's it. You know, um, just gotta say to finish up, you know, Hollywood, you killed Corey Heyman. You know, Corey Feldman lost his pseudo, you know, Siamese twin brother and oh, Hollywood, you know, you should feel bad about yourself.